Hello guys and welcome back to TechWolf and to another CompTIA Plus practice test quiz. And if you are interested in more quizzes, you can go to my channel and click here on playlists. And there you will find much more quizzes I am already creating for Network Plus. But here if you scroll down, you will see this CompTIA Plus practice test. Here you can find on CompTIA Plus Core 1 and Core 2. So, no further ado guys, and today we are getting into another CompTIA Plus core one quiz and first question is which of the following solutions provide the AAA functionality select two answers so AAA if you know from your studying materials it refers to authentication authorization and accounting and the answers are radius pub chap tacax plus or ms dash chap and here the correct answers are TACAX and RADIUS. Which of the answers listed below refer to the protocol and port number used by spam filter? 443, 23, Telnet, SMTP, HTTPS or 25. As question is asking about protocol and port number used by spam filter, we already know that this is about emails. So the correct answers here are SMTP or Simple Mail Transfer Protocol and port 25 as SMTP runs on port 25. The term Unified Threat Management or UTM refers to a network security solution commonly used in the form of dedicated device called UTM appliance or web security gateway, which combines the functionality of a firewall with additional features such as URL filtering, content inspection, spam filtering, gateway antivirus protection, IDS IPS function or malware inspection. Is this statement true or false? So on your CompTIA A plus exam, as I have taken my, these exams myself guys, always make sure that you understand the question. So read the question carefully, understand it, and when you understand, then make your decision. And here the correct answer is that this is true. A physical network device or software solution designed for managing the optimal distribution of workloads across multiple computing resources is known as Load Balancer Proxy Server Content Filtering or Domain Controller And here the correct answer is Load Balancer as Load Balancers are responsible for distribution of workloads across multiple computing resources. In computer networking, a computer system or application that acts as an intermediary between another computer and the Internet is commonly referred to as Proxy, Bridge, Server or Active Hub. And here the question is asking which is intermediary between an other computer and the Internet. So when this question is referring to computer and the Internet, you can straight away know that this is nothing to do with LAN or local area network or VLANs and which device could be intermediary between Internet and your computer. And here the correct answer is proxy. Which of the following answers refers to industrial and manufacturing control system? EDR, MDM, SCADA or CMS? And here correct answer is SCADA. An emerging field of new technologies such as wearable tech or home automation is known as NFC, ESN, SOC or IOT? And here the correct answer is IOT, Internet of Things. What allows to determine which network segment and an IP address belongs to? Subnet mask, address resolution protocol or ARP, physical address or dynamic host configuration protocol. 
And here we know that subnet mask is the correct answer, as subnet masks allow us to see or understand what type of IP address we are using and which part of IP belongs to network and which part of IP belongs to hosts. In a network using subnets, the term default gateway refers to a network device that enables exchange of data between hosts residing in different subnets. Is this statement true or false? So in network using subnets, the term default gateway refers to a network device that enables exchange of data between hosts residing in different subnets. And here the correct answer is that this statement is true. Which of the answers listed below refers to a network device providing an entry point into another network or the internet? And here the answers are switch, default gateway, hub or proxy server. And here the correct answer is default gateway. Which of the following answers lists data required for manual configuration of network adapter settings? And here we need to select all that apply. So first we need to think about what is network adapter and what settings we can set to network adapters. And the answers for this question, DNS server address, subnet mask, IP address, MAC address, SSID aka network name, or default gateway, so which one we can set to network adapter. And here the correct answers are DNS server address, as by configuring network adapters, we can specify DNS server address, subnet mask, IP address, and default gateway address. These are four parameters which we can specify to network adapters when we are setting up a network adapter. An IPv4 address consists of 48 bits, 32 bits, 64 bits, 128 bits. So how many bits we have in IPv4 address? And the correct answer here is 32 bits. IPv4 addresses are expressed with the use of binary numbers, decimal numbers, octagonal numbers or hexadecimal numbers. And here the correct answer is decimal numbers, as we are expressing IPv4 addresses in decimal numbers. Which of the following answers refers to an IPv4 loopback address? Column, column 1. Then all these answers, I will not be going through them. Have a look and pick your answer. And here the correct answer is 127.0.0.1, as this is the loopback address. Which of the following answers refers to the characteristic features of the 10.0.0.0-10.255.255.255 and 10.0.0.0 forward slash forward slash 8? or this is also known as CIDR, IPv4 address space, select two answers. And here we need to determine which class of IP address it is, whether it is a public or private. Class C range, public IP address range, class B range, non-routable private IP address range, or class A range. And here you need to know these classes of IP addresses. And the correct answer here is that this is class A range. And another correct answer, as we need to select two answers, is that this is also non-routable private IP address range. And non-routable, this means that this works only on LANs or local area networks and is not routable over the internet or behind the gateway of your router. So, these are private addresses. Which of the answers listed below refer to the 172.16.0.0-172.31.255.255 CIDR or forward slash 12 IPv4 address space? And here we also need to select two answers. And here you also need to know what class of address it is by looking at IP address. 
So here we can see straight away that this is class B range address and this is also a non-routable private IP address range as this address also can be used only within a local area networks or LANs and this is not routable outside the LANs and is being used only on local area networks. What are the characteristic features of the 192.168.0.0? dash 192.168.255.255 ipv4 address space and here we also need to select two answers so class c range class b range class a range which class this ip address belongs to and whether it's a non-routable private ip address range or this is public ip address range and here we also need to specify the class and this is class c and 192.168 is the class which you will be working the most and even now if you will open your cmd or command line and if you will check ip config you will see that your device ip address is also configured to 192.168 this is in 99 percent of cases as these are the most used ip addresses in lans or local area networks actually i needed to sell select also that this is non-routable private ip address that's why i got in correct answer so this is class c range and this is non-routable private ip address range next question an ipv6 address consists of 64 bits 32 bits 48 bits or 128 bits so how many bits we have in ipv6 address and here's the correct answer is 128 bits IPv4 addresses are expressed with the use of hexadecimal numbers, decimal numbers, octagonal numbers or binary numbers. And we had a previously question about IPv4 address and you remember that IPv4 addresses are in decimal numbers. However, IPv6 address you should know that this is hexadecimal numbers. And the correct answer is hexadecimal numbers as in the address itself it might be letters and numbers. Not only decimal numbers or numbers as it is with IPv4 addresses. So hexadecimal numbers. A double colon in an IPv6 address indicates that part of the address containing only zeros has been compressed to make the address shorter. And here whether this statement is true or false. And here the statement is true. If we have zeros in IPv6 addresses we can shorten the IPv6 address by adding a column. And we can also strip the leading zeros in IPv6 addresses to make them shorter. So this is the correct answer. Which of the following answers lists a valid IPv6 address of FE80, column 00 of A7, column 000, column 000, column 02AA, column 000, column 04C00, column FE9A after compression. And this is what I was talking about. Firstly, you know that you can strip the leading zeros, and if we look at this IP address, which is FE80, and then column, then we can see that there are two leading zeros, 00, 00 a7 we can know straight away that we can strip these two leading zeros so we would have fe80 column and a7 left and then we have 0 0 0 0 0 0 and we can replace these zeros with column and this is only in first case in our address so after a7 we would have double column and, and we can strip this zero before two, so there will be left two AA. So the correct answer most likely will be this very first answer. And which of the following answers refer to IPv6 loopback address? Select two answers. So now we are looking for IPv6 loopback address, not for IPv4. 127.0.0.1, forward slash 16, zero. 0 column 0 column 0 column 0 column 0 column 0 column column 1 and fe80 column column forward slash 10 or column column 1 and here you should know that the loopback address for ipv6 
is colon colon one this is one answer and another one would be call, uh, this one with zeros with seven zeros which are separated by columns in some cases they might be separated with dots and which ends with one so this is another correct answer and one to seven to zero dot zero dot one this is ipv4 loopback address and that's the correct answer and another question where we need to specify whether this statement is true or false. Automatic private IP addressing, APIPA, allows the Windows host to self-configure an IPv4 address and subnet mask when dynamic host configuration protocol, THCP, is unavailable. APIPA uses an address block range between 169.254.0.0 and 169.254.255.255 and APIPA assigned addresses are valid only for communications with a network segment that a given host is connected to and the host with APIPA assigned addresses cannot connect to the internet, whether this is true or false. And this statement is true because firstly a PIPA address, you can spot it straight away if it starts by 169.254, you can say straight away that this is a PIPA address and device assigned this address to itself. Because it was not able to find the DHCP server or DHCP server was not configured or for example if DHCP server broke down. And another thing about a PIPA address, you should know that these addresses cannot be used to communicate to internet and you can communicate only with devices on the same local area network but not go to the internet. So this is true statement and which of the answers listed below refers to a permanent assignment of an IP address. Dynamic IP address, private IP address, public IP address or static IP address. So which of these answers listed below refers to a permanent assignment of an IP address? And here the correct answer is static IP address, as this is when you are assigning IP address yourself and this is a static IP address. Dynamic IP addresses are being ad assigned by DHCP server and private IP addresses and public IP addresses. This means simply that these are the classes or ranges of IP addresses and that has nothing to do with permanent assignment or assignment itself. What type of server handles the assignment of dynamic IP addresses? Authentication server, proxy server, DNS server or DHCP server? So which of these servers are assigning IP addresses? And here you should know straight away that this is DHCP server. So yes guys. This was my another quiz and like I mentioned at the start, if you are interested in more questions, go to the channel's homepage, click on playlists and you can find many more quizzes and tests on different CompTIA subjects. Soon I will also be making on Security Plus and now already there are some quizzes also on Networking Plus, then there are also quizzes on CompTIA Plus, Core 1 and Core 2. And I will also leave a link in first pin and comment under this video. So yes guys, if you found this video useful, leave a like, share this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new and see you in the next one.